Sample mounting for SEM, nanoparticles or particles in suspension. This video is brought to you by the Electron Microscope Unit at the University of New South Wales Mark Wainwright Analytical Centre, a node of the Microscopy Australia network. Here we use the term nanoparticles to refer to any particulate nanomaterials ranging in size typically between 1 and 100 nanometers in at least one dimension. Examples include nanospheres, nanocubes, branch nanoparticles, nanotubes, nanorods, and nanosheets. The technique described here can also be used to prepare fine non-nanopowdered samples in suspension for SEM examination. When mounting nanoparticle samples for SEM, our main goal is to create as thin a dispersal of particles across areas of the substrate as possible. This allows the particles to adhere to the substrate and ensures that the negative charge generated by the electron beam has a pathway away from the surface of the particles to the substrate. Materials. For this procedure, you will need a very small amount of the sample, in dry particulate form or in solution. A tenth of a gram of dry sample is more than enough. Solvent in which to suspend the particles. Common solvents include methanol, ethanol, or water a small SEM stub, an ultrasonic bath, tweezers or forceps, a micropipette or disposable fine tip pipette, double-sided adhesive. At the EMU, we provide users with double-sided conductive carbon tape, scissors, and a substrate. Common substrates include silicon wafer pieces, small glass cover slips, form VAR-coated TEM grids, and freshly cleaved mica sheets. Additional materials you may need if preparing dry nanoparticle samples include a microcentrifuge tube, a small spatula, a ducted fume cupboard, and a pin stub holder. Preparation method. Please note, handling of any dry particulate nanomaterials or volatile solvents must be conducted in a fume cupboard with the sash pulled down low Dispose of excess sample, solvent, or contaminated waste according to state and federal requirements and guidance provided in the relevant safety data sheets. Step 1. Put on gloves. Always keep fingerprints off anything that will go into the SEM chamber, such as stubs and samples. Step 2. Choose a stub compatible with the SEM you will be using. Small SEM stubs available through the UNSW EMU currently include 12.6 mm pin stubs, and 15 mm screw thread base stubs. Step three, label your SEM stub with the sample name or ID code. Step four, place one side of the double-sided adhesive onto the SEM stub. Remove the protective film to expose the surface of the double-sided adhesive. Step five, place the substrate on the adhesive. Apply gentle pressure to fix the substrate securely taking care not to damage the surface. Step six. For dry particles not already in suspension, place a very small quantity of your sample into the microcentrifuge tube using a small clean spatula. Then add a few drops of your chosen solvent. Step seven. For all samples, check that your suspension is only slightly cloudy. If necessary, continue to add solvent until the suspension is nearly clear. Step 8. Ensure the tube lid is securely closed, then ultrasonicate the particles in solution for a couple of minutes to disperse the particles. Remember, do not touch the sample tube or the ultrasonicator while the ultrasonicator is in operation. Step 9. Using a disposable fine tip pipette or a micropipette, take up a small quantity of the ultrasonicated sample and place a droplet onto the substrate. Step 10. Allow the solvent to evaporate fully. Ensure that the sample is completely dry before attempting SEM examination. Step 11. Place the mounted sample in a secure SEM storage box. Keep samples stored in a clean, dry environment. <laughs>